Tyrannosaurus grew up to 43 feet or larger and weighed up to 20,000 pounds. It lived 72.6 to 65 million years ago in North America. Undoubtedly, the most famous dinosaur of all time was Tyrannosaurus rex. It is known by nearly everyone on the planet, is featured in hundreds of documentaries, shows, and movies, and has more merchandise than any other prehistoric creature. What you may not know, however, is that the Tyrant Lizard King originally had a different and much more boring name, leading to outrage in the scientific community and general public. Here's the complete history of Tyrannosaurus rex. It all started in 1892 when two vertebrae were named Manispondylus gigas by Ed Tard Stinker Cope. The name Manispondylus gigas means giant porous vertebrae. The vertebrae were named towards the end of the infamous Bone Wars, meaning that along with a large chunk of other fossils, they were named with little research or care. The Bone Wars was simply a competition to name as many species as possible. Many of the species names should be combined in the same genus and even multiple genera should be combined due to a lack of major differences. Keep in mind that even in humans there's a whole lot of skeletal variation. Some humans are 7 feet tall, others only 3 when fully grown. Some have 10 fingers, others have 8 or 12. There are differences between skulls and dentition as well, etc. Dinosaurs with the slightest differences are classified as different genera. For instance, if we found a Tyrannosaurus with three fingers on each hand rather than two, even if it was otherwise identical skeletal-wise, paleontologists would be like, new genus, rather than considering that it may have had a mutation and been a rare specimen. The paleontologists might even say that this rewrites the entire family tree of the Tyrannosaurs, when in reality it's no different than a human with an extra pinky on each hand. It would still be a Tyrannosaurus in reality, but not in the eyes of the paleontologists. Nowadays, it can take a long time to get a new species or genus named. This allows for as much accuracy as possible and careful consideration of the placement of the taxa. Back to Tyrannosaurus' history, a Kansas man named Barnum Brown discovered the remains of a Tyrannosaurus rex in Montana in 1902. Later, in 1905, the skeleton was given the official name Tyrannosaurus rex by Henry Fairfield Osborne. In a paper by Osborne in 1917, he pointed out that the Manispondylus and Tyrannosaurus vertebrae strongly resembled each other. However, nobody batted an eye, at least not at the time. The Black Hills Institute of Geological Research rediscovered the original fossil site for Manispondylus gigas in the year 2000. Remains of Tyrannosaurus were uncovered at the site, confirming that Tyrannosaurus and Mandospondylus were the same species. Now, according to the ICZN rules, the first name given to a genus has priority over any names given later. This meant that from then on, all references and mentions of Tyrannosaurus must be called Mandospondylus instead. This resulted in public outrage because who in their right mind would prefer to call the tyrant lizard king giant porous vertebrae instead? Luckily, however, a revision done to the ICZN rules meant that any junior synonym that was widely used for a creature that was given before 1899 could be used as the accepted name, rather than the senior name. Pretty much the only mentions of the name Manispondylus were references to the similarity between it and Tyrannosaurus. Meanwhile, Tyrannosaurus was the most popular dinosaur on the planet. And just like that, Tyrannosaurus got to keep its name, much to the relief of the scientific community and general public. Now that we've talked about how Tyrannosaurus came to be known, we can dive into its fascinating habits and biology. While Tyrannosaurus wasn't the largest carnivorous dinosaur, as that title was taken by Spinosaurus, it was still the largest carnivorous animal to ever set foot in North America at 43 feet long and 20,000 pounds in weight. Tyrannosaurus Sue, the most complete individual and most famous non-binary, measured 40 feet long and was 28 years old at the time of their death. However, other individuals are known to have been larger. The maximum age for a Tyrannosaurus has been calculated at 30 years. Since we have discovered so many different Tyrannosaurus skeletons of different ages, it was possible to put together a growth curve for the species. This revealed an S-shaped curve, showing that for the first 10 years of their lives, Tyrannosaurus grew slowly. During the next 10 years, Tyrannosaurus had a period of rapid growth, increasing in size from one-tenth of their size to nearly their maximum size. The last 10 years of Tyrannosaurus' life had slowed growth once more. While Tyrannosaurus had around the same length lifespan as other Tyrannosaurs, it grew much longer and heavier in the same span of time. It has been heavily debated whether Tyrannosaurus was a predator or a scavenger. Some arguments for this include its speed. 
Tyrannosaurus was nowhere near as fast as depicted in Jurassic Park or other movies. It definitely could not keep up with a speeding Jeep. In order to run 25 plus miles per hour, Tyrannosaurus would need 80% of its muscle mass in its legs, which is completely unheard of. It is estimated that Tyrannosaurus would have had a running speed of 11 miles per hour, much slower than other theropods. It also couldn't maintain the speed for long. Its preferred walking speed was only 3 miles per hour. This does not mean Tyrannosaurus was a scavenger. As seen with other animals such as Dunkleosteus, the predator only needs to be fast enough to catch its prey. Tyrannosaurus preyed on large herbivorous dinosaurs, including Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, and Edmontosaurus. These dinosaurs weren't meant for speed. Tyrannosaurus' stride was larger than its prey's, meaning it didn't require as much energy to walk and could outlast its target long distance. Another argument for Tyrannosaurus being a scavenger is that its arms were too tiny to be useful. This is an extremely invalid argument, however. Tyrannosaurus had a much larger head proportionately than dinosaurs with longer arms, such as Dromaeosaurs. Dromaeosaurs used their front and back limbs to attack prey since they had a much smaller head proportionate to body size. Tyrannosaurus, on the other hand, used its head and extremely powerful bite force to take out its prey. Additionally, its arms weren't useless. Ablosaurus had such useless arms that they couldn't even bend their wrist or elbow, and most of their fingers didn't even have claws. Their arms were so small that they might not have even been visible on the outside of their body, with the skin and muscles covering them up. Tyrannosaurus, on the other hand, had fully mobile joints and could lift 440 pounds with its arms. Another thing to consider is that an if an animal no longer needs a certain feature, over time it evolves to not have that feature anymore. Tyrannosaurus didn't need its arms for killing prey, therefore it wasn't necessary to have larger arms. Instead, it used its head, which was held at the perfect height to bite the necks and backs of its prey. A single bite from Tyrannosaurus in the right spot would cripple or kill its prey instantly. There is an Edmontosaurus skeleton with bite marks on the, its vertebrae from a Tyrannosaurus. The bones had healed, meaning that the Edmontosaurus was alive when the Tyrannosaurus bit it, and it survived the encounter. However, if Tyrannosaurus' bite was an inch deeper, the Edmontosaurus would have been killed in the attack. Tyrannosaurus had a bone-crushing bite, which was necessary for chomping through Ankylosaurus armor and Triceratops horns. Tyrannosaurus had an amazing sense of smell that it would have used to detect prey or carrion. Almost all predators also scavenge when presented the opportunity. This is because the carcass is a free meal that Tyrannosaurus wouldn't have to waste energy attacking or risk energy from the prey fighting back. Tyrannosaurus had a great sense of sight as well as smell. The back of Tyrannosaurus' head was much wider than the front, resulting in binocular vision and great depth perception. This allowed it to know when it was close enough to strike its prey. Tyrannosaurus could tell the distance between it and its prey, if its prey was moving, and how fast its prey was traveling. Eagles can see 3.6 times better than humans, but Tyrannosaurus could see 13 times better than humans. Tyrannosaurus would have been capable of seeing an object 3.7 miles away. Tyrannosaurus had a bite force of 35,000 to 57,000 newtons. Its mouth was U-shaped rather than V-shaped. The U-shape gave Tyrannosaurus a bigger bite than other theropods such as Allosaurus and allowed it to rip off more meat at a time. The teeth on the side of Tyrannosaurus' mouth could bite through bone and were up to a foot long including the root. Tyrannosaurus had lips to cover its teeth. Tyrannosaurus was once considered to be sluggish and cold-blooded, as were other dinosaurs. Tyrannosaurus's rapid growth curve provides evidence for warm-bloodedness. Cold-blooded animals have a constant growth rate, growing at the same pace throughout their entire lives, while Tyrannosaurus and other dinosaurs had periods of rapid growth throughout their teenage years. It is possible that very young Tyrannosaurus had down feathers covering its body as insulation. However, we know for a fact that adult Tyrannosauruses were completely featherless. While Eutyrannus fossils have been found with feather imprints, Tyrannosaurus fossils have been found with pebble-like scaly skin. The Tyrannosaurus skin found shows that in areas where Eutyrannus had feathers, Tyrannosaurus was bald. Prehistoric planet lied to you. There are two different size classes of Tyrannosaurus skeletons. There is a larger and heavier form, and a smaller and lighter form. It was once thought that the larger ones were females, and the smaller ones were males. Additionally, it was believed that the females had a shorter chevron on the first tail vertebrae, that way the eggs could pass through. However, some of the skeletons thought to be females, such as Sue, had a full-length chevron, disproving that theory. 
While it's impossible to tell the difference between male and female for most Tyrannosaurus skeletons, one skeleton is confirmed to be female due to the presence of medullary tissue in her remains. Medullary tissue stores calcium that is used to produce eggshells. This tissue is only present in females, meaning that Tyrannosaurus skeleton must be female. Medullary tissue has also been found in several other dinosaurs. In 2005, paleontologists broke a Tyrannosaurus femur apart to transport it. On the inside was fibrous bone matrix tissue and blood vessels. It used to be thought that soft tissue was incapable of being fossilized, but this proved otherwise. While there's evidence for pack hunting in some Tyrannosaurus, such as Eutyrannus and Albertosaurus, there's none for Tyrannosaurus. Several Tyrannosaurus skulls have what appear to be bite marks from other Tyrannosaurus. It was once thought that these Tyrannosaurus were fighting for dominance. However, now it's thought that the marks were caused by a parasite that infected the Tyrannosaurus when they drank from the water where the parasite was found. Modern birds are affected by a parasite called Trichomonas, which causes growth on the soft tissue of the birds and scarring on the bone. It is thought that something similar happened to these Tyrannosaurus. In 2010, it was suggested that Tyrannosaurus may have been cannibalistic. Strong tooth marks were found on the legs and feet of a Tyrannosaurus skeleton. The Tyrannosaurus was already dead when eaten, however, since the legs of a living Tyrannosaurus would have been the farthest point away from the mouth of the other Tyrannosaurus. If a Tyrannosaurus were to attack another living Tyrannosaurus, it would go for the head or neck. The legs have some of the smallest amounts of muscle mass, meaning that the victim was a long dead carcass that was picked clean by the time the other Tyrannosaurus got to it. In 1955, a new Tyrannosaur skeleton was discovered in Mongolia. It was named as a new species of Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus batar. The skeletons of Tyrannosaurus rex and Tyrannosaurus batar were so similar from side view that with a quick glance they could not be easily distinguished. However, in 1965, Tyrannosaurus batar was renamed Tarbosaurus batar as it was evident that it was a separate genus. There were a few differences between the skeletons as well as them being from different continents. However, in all reality, while Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus may be different species, they are likely in the same genus. Just because they are found on totally different continents doesn't mean anything. Look at jaguars and lions, South America and Africa. They are the same genus. They have differences in their skeletons too. So why is it necessary to classify Tarbosaurus separately from Tyrannosaurus? Because paleontologists are underpaid and therefore don't have the time to look into things like this even though it's common sense. The difference between Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus is that Tyrannosaurus has a much wider skull. Another Tyrannosaur named Zuching Tyrannus is more closely related to Tarbosaurus than Tarbosaurus is to Tyrannosaurus, meaning that Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus were not that closely related. However, once again, this is comparing morphology rather than genetics, meaning that this method of linking creatures taxonomically is not, nor ever will be, 100% accurate, and considering the Bone Wars naming spree not even close to 100%. For example, hyenas and dogs look similar. Most people even assume they're related. However, hyenas are practically cats through DNA analysis and are much more closely related to cats than to dogs. Another example is within vultures. New world and old world vultures may look similar, but old world vultures are birds of prey and new world vultures are not and are more closely related to storks. They evolve similarities through convergent evolution. Yet another example is the emerald tree boa and green tree python. Pythons and boas are not actually as closely related as you think, even though these two species look almost identical. In 2022, Tyrannosaurus rex was split into three species. The two additional species were named Tyrannosaurus imperator and Tyrannosaurus regina. Tyrannosaurus sue became the holotype for Tyrannosaurus imperator, and Wankel rex became the holotype for Tyrannosaurus regina. The species were split apart based on the robustness of skeletal elements mentioned earlier, including the femur, maxilla, dentary, humerus, ilium, and metatarsals. Tyrannosaurus imperator is thought to be the ancestor to T. rex and T. regina since all of its specimens date to an earlier period stratigraphically. In 2024, a Tyrannosaurus skeleton discovered in 1983 was described and named Tyrannosaurus micraensis. It existed at a period in time before Tyrannosaurus rex, around 5 to 7 million years earlier to be exact. T. micraensis was estimated to be 40 feet long. It had a proportionately longer bottom jaw with a less prominent chin than T. rex, as well as blunter teeth and a weaker bite. It is thought that Tyrannosaurus may have cared for and fed its offspring. In a 2021 paper, it was estimated that there were anywhere from 165 million to 41 billion Tyrannosaurus alive throughout their existence. 
The average estimate for the number living at one time resulted in an estimate of 2.5 billion Tyrannosaurus alive throughout their existence. It is thought that only 1 in 80 million Tyrannosaurus would become fossilized. To summarize, Tyrannosaurus is estimated to have grown up to or over 43 feet long and weigh up to 20,000 pounds. It could run 11 miles per hour for short distances or walk 3 miles per hour more comfortably. It could see an object up to 3.7 miles away. It had a bite force of up to 57,000 newtons. It could kill pretty much any other carnivorous dinosaur. This massive meat-eating monster could easily kill a human, at least if it could catch you, that is. While it may have been slow, it could still quickly make sharp turns while running and pivot on a single foot. Juvenile Tyrannosaurus, however, could run up to 38 miles per hour.